Ready for the uber uber maven fastest kill you've ever seen? Look at this. Look at my buttons. Holy shit, it's dead. It's dead! What the fuck? No, man. No. F. It was bad. Oh my! She's dead! This damage is unethical. What's this build? I just got a hungry loop. Oh my. She almost died. I should have clicked on her faster. We win. Guys, watch how fast I can do this one. Holy shit, she's dead! <laughs> that damage! Dude, isn't that insane? Have you ever seen Uber Uber Maven die that quickly? It looks like normal Maven. Even squishier than normal Maven. Look at this brain, he's dead. You don't need longer brittle when you just kill them instantly. Right, up, right, up, right, up. I just got the greatest maven you've ever seen. I didn't even... Boom. Holy! Oh! I got the chest plate. Oh my god. That damage, even with reduced extra damage from crits. How much are we doing? <laughs> Is that it? Nice. Congrats on the upgrade, man. The cha It's so funny. You just swap in Mistress for Shaper. What do you take out? Commander? But I want to do Uber. And then I'd rather just do- if I'm doing Witness for Shaper, because the only reason you would do the Shaper is if you're doing the Feared. And then instead of Shaper, you would do Uber Uber Elder. And then you sell your Shaper to people who want to run Shaper because they're not strong enough to run the Uber Uber Elder. You take out Forbidden Jewels? I don't have those. Oh, okay. Meh. 50 because of the extra quand 263 120 less recovery i'm dead i'm dead i'm dead okay pre-summon the skellies and go right away and then who are we going for this one this is a stupid choice i should do nope that's a stupid choice too i'm dead that's the one
I'm stuck. Um, it's fine. We got this. We got this. Faith. Should I put in Grace instead of the Haze? Uh, yes. Let's put this back to... Yeah. Wait, what was this? Oh, my Val Haste. Oh, that's why. Okay, yeah, this is good. Val Discipline. Oh, yeah, I haven't bought that yet. It was expensive. Because I wanted the AoE. I don't even really care as much about the AoE, but... I did want the AoE originally. This is really fucked. They have, like, life as ES and shit. I got my Val Skellies off. Oh god. Yes! Oh my god! Holy shit! Have you ever seen 2.1 Maven Ritz? I win! I win! I win! Look at that! It's hilarious! Oh, Garb! Oh my god, a Chayulus Flawless! Holy shit. He wants to mirror this. Holy shit. That's disgusting. Two mediums, no smalls. Jesus. That looks so fucked up. Oh wow. What the hell is that? An ancient? Thanks. Yo, let's put that shit on right now. And 10 golden oils. Thanks so much. Look at that damage! What the- They value different things. Dead. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Here we go. It's dead! What is that? What the fuck is that? Okay, let's do, uh, 202 quant. Stupid incandescent invitation. That's gonna be dumb. Skelly version. 202. Cast, beat, frenzies, chain four, fizz is lightning. 80 fizz damage reduction. The fires of a thousand stars. Okay, here we go. Annihilation. Easy. Decent amount of poison, actually. But I'm CI. The minions, though. I have the extra chaos res. Based on their version, you could cut, like, 
four dread marches, three dread marches, and and be okay. But that's if the fizz is okay. Which it's different for bossing. It's right, but then in some fizz situations, it's gonna be worse. But yeah, theirs would be drop the three and just run the tree for the two points. But that's where I'm like, dude, literally three dread marches is the same as the two points. And it All right, uh, let's do this. <laughs> Void touch writ. It's a screaming invitation. We have all the stuff. Hide of hubris. Let's go. Uh, showing off the skellies. Uh, I have to switch into it. It's a pretty easy swap. Uh, so I just take this ring off, put this ring on, put this to a phase run. And then uh, we're uh, left click, and then we're uh, Val Skelly, and there you go. And right click, flame dash, and everything's ready. And I have the mana flask. Here we go. So this one has 200 AoE. Uh, this is dumb. This is dumb. But I'm doing it, and uh, here we go. Wish me luck. We're doing it. The skelly damage is insane. Don't get hit by that. Oh, this is gonna be messed up. Oh my god, it's so bad. Uh, I almost got it. It's so, so juice though, it's understandable, honestly. Uh, this thing is huge it started huge i couldn't even get out of the out of the circle what is that that's oh, gonna be massive i dodged it i can't dodge that one what the fuck is that oh my god it's so big what the <laughs> uh maybe with the other enemy i could tank it Them. That's some big AoE, bro. Done. Easy. I wanted to show you a normal one in comparison, and a normal one for me is still crazy. 118. I still have Hide of Hubris. I juiced all the mods. I have 100% Avoid Impale. There's Endurance Charges. So the thing I'm going to do here is switch the Dread Banner to War Banner. Uh. So we get the Fizz instead, because the Impale is a Void 100%. I would have taken off Rotten Claws, but I don't have the, the Skill Points, and we'll just do it. Um, and then we'll keep the Assassin's Mark instead of um, Poachers against him, and it should be fine. We have the 11 Skellies. Uh, we're doing massive damage. Now he's doing this phase. So I want to do the ones close to the center first, and try to move away from this thing. Uh, I think he extends it faster than when he's in the other one. And the tentacles, oh my god, you know? Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. One more skelly, there you go. And he's dead. No, um, kingmaker, no pulling. I should probably put that back. This build is uh, uh, the ultimate minion army. It, it actually has everything. Um, we have 10 zombies, 3 carry-on golems. Uh, we can summon 11 skeletons, not counting the Val skeleton. Uh, and then we also have the 4 specters and the anime guardian. And then uh, they're really high level minions. So 31, 31, 30, 30... Uh, 29. It's insane. We have the uh, two, three links, technically a four link in the helmet with the plus three because that's an awaken, uh, I mean, an, an empower four. Uh, and then the chest plate is the uh, divergent carry on this, the raised on B5 links with the uh, awaken multi, awaken brutality, awaken melee, fizz, awaken minion damage. And I did the same thing in a ring with a hungry loop. All of those awaken gems with Valskelly. 
And it's disgusting. So all these minions are pooping out damage. The zombies do most of it. The, the skellies, when you act, use them, they do most. Then zombies, then the carry-on. And the carry-on is really useful for its mobility. While the specters, we're using the two carnage and two host chieftains from Ashenfields Act 7. If you don't know, you can go here and raise your specters. Uh, just desecrate and then uh, raise them by holding A and pressing the specter button. And then uh, you... Uh, you get them added to your desecrate pool and you never have to go back there. And then you could do it in your hideout. And then uh, those specters are giving us frenzy and power charges, big damage, big attack speed, big crits, uh, some move speed. And then we have our animate guardian for the big buffs. And uh, you could switch that to divergent technically uh, for the extra health on the animate guardian. So right now uh, mine in game is 128,000 on the animate guardian. If you swapped it to the Divergent, it goes to 154 with the uh, Ashes of the Stars. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty tanky anime guardian. I think he's immortal. Uh, it's the tankiest he's ever been. And uh, now to get into the rest of the build. Alright, now to talk about the 6 link. So we have uh, Ray Zombie, 5 link, and uh, Carrion Golem, 5 link. And uh, here's the Divergent Carrion Golem. And then we have uh, cooldown recovery raid and normal zombie. And uh, I went divergent carry on golem because we're not running the harmonies. Uh, I don't run the other primordial jewels and I don't run uh, any cooldown. So then uh, no harmonies. <clears throat> I get the cooldown through this and then I have anima stone for, the next, for an extra golem and I have this. And then uh, I run the, the carry on golem and zombies 3 carry on 10 zombie. I like the cooldown recovery rate because the golem has two abilities. So the first one is a leap slam and it has a four second cooldown normally, but with my extra cooldown recovery rate, I got it down. Um, it's way better. And this is upgraded the quality through the ashes. Then uh, there's also the cascade, which works with multi strike and it's like an AOE ability. And uh, I used to use it for clear, but it's also pretty good at bossing. Um, it's not that bad. So, yeah, it's called a Cascade of Bone Spikes. Uh, I, I kind of like it. And so getting the cooldown of that lower, it works on bosses pretty well. Uh, helmet, I go for Anomalous AG for the AoE when we're doing our Explode Animate Guardian. I'll go into detail in that uh, separately. But there's also videos on it. But um, basically, AoE huge with the ashes and then we have the uh, ray specter so this is better than the normal one but uh getting just 21 on these is the big priority because the extra survivability and then they they want the extra quality on the anomalous ag for the aoe but for the ray specter you could just go with the basic 121 um and then the quality is move speed but this is how you get the extra life with the anomalous ray specter and then 2120 uh and then the anomalous maim for the extra maim effect which is the slow um and then anomalous feeding frenzy so regular feeding frenzy gets the extra duration but this one recovers one percent of life on hit it's not uh leech it's not uh like regen this is recover and it's on hit so it works with the chain explosions ex animate guardian uh procking the maim and the vulnerability uh across everything and then also healing him a lot we've gone over this but the skelly 5 link val skelly could be a 2120 just could cost more it's like 10x 15x and then the the four hungry loop is the four awakened gem same as the chest plate uh you could do some other alternatives since val skelly has different things like skelly mages and archers but it's pretty good uh, and then in the wand, I went, um, this is the Divergent Desecrate, Divergent Flesh Offering. <clears throat> so, the Desecrate has to come before the Offering, so have it either here or here, and then the Offering. And then we have, uh, Trigger, and then, uh, I've used a Mana Flask, this Mana Mod, and also you can go for a Mana Mod here to reduce the Mana Cost of Skills. So, this wand with the trigger increases the mana cost by 150%, so it goes up to like 95, but I got it down to 40 using the reduction of mana with the mage blood, and then doing the reduced mana here. Um, so then it's only 40 to cast my offering, and I have 200 mana, so that's cool, so I could do the like, blah, 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 blah. And I got the offering, and I summoned all the skeletons in seconds. The skeletons are only 24 for a 5 link.
Uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. So then, um, that's how we automate the offering. We're just summoning the skeletons and the offering is automated. Done. Uh, and then we have uh, Anomalous Vitality with the leech. This makes the offering better. It makes this It's all really good. Good, good combo. Good package together. And then, um, this is just Molten Shell Increased Duration. Uh, I wouldn't recommend to cast some damage taken when you're bossing because it like you want to use it at the right times and time it for when you're actually like getting hit rather than just wasting it. So and then increased duration gives you like a longer window of of tanking. It's really good, especially when you can foul molten shell and get 20 seconds. But a secret tip, if you didn't know, molten shell is actually better than foul molten shell if it's a big enough shield. See, okay, so if you have enough armor, Molten Shell is better. Because um, the only benefit of the Val Molten Shell really is that it takes a bigger amount of the armor and makes a big shield. But if you already have enough armor and you can make the big shield, you're good. And then if you only take that amount of damage in the shield duration anyways, because let's say you don't have the increased duration, then um, yeah. So my point is this one has 75% of damage from hits taken uh, and this one's 40%. So this one actually tanks more damage f to the shield. Um, and I still have almost a 10k shield without needing more armor. So, yep, that's pretty crazy. And uh, and then we have the extra duration. And then this is... Uh, I'll do this one first. In this glove, uh, I got an Enlightened 4 prefix. So this is... Uh, I was going to go through the item separately, but... Well... This one I have to talk about. We got Socketed Gems are supported by level 4 in line and it's fractured. You get this from Sentinel from recombining intelligence gloves and then it's prefix. And uh, well, I fractured it with Harvest and then I mo move spell suppression to it. And here we have the crafted up glove. So uh, the Enlightened Force uh, is a five link basically. And then we have the discipline, the determination, the grace, and the pride. And then. Um, They all get it supported by the Enlightened Four. Um, if you can't do this, then uh, you could do it with like an Enlightened Five or an Enlightened Four just in the build and, and link it, but then it's not a five link. And it's really cool to be able to put 50% aura, 50% aura, 50% aura, and a 35 in an Enlightened Four. So this is actually a five link in my build where I already have all the crazy links and all the crazy stuff. This is hilarious. This is a fun season, man. Um, so yeah, you can do this differently, but when you can see that, it's like, woo, that's, yep, because you wouldn't be able to do the discipline in the link, and, uh, this actually has a plus two on the glove, so then the plus two for the discipline gives you extra ES without needing a plus levels ring, which is really nice, uh, it's actually really sick, and then the extra AOE actually works on the auras anyways, uh, and it's, it's just good. Now the final one, very interesting as well is um so the dread banner lots of people always wonder about this we do divergent for that extra impale chance it's so good uh it's a good source of impale after the impale support nerf after rotting claws nerf dread banner isn't nerfed yet so then we have this very important instead of awakened generosity you do divergent and the extra aura area of effect is very important because your aura needs to reach the enemy for them to be affected so if you're not stacking the impales you ain't getting that extra damage and so if you're if your banner is tiny it sucks uh here's my banner boom this massive thing the full size of the maven arena etc like that's what you want bro that's what you want Unless you're like extremely active and completely aware that your banner is tiny and you and you do with it accordingly, you know. But uh, I recommend the bigger size. And then uh, this is a tech from uh, Gameling slash Playling or uh, he's also Russian guy. Awaken Enhance uh, linking this because of we like ashes on this for the quality for the extra impale. So yo, Awaken Enhance barely adds any extra mana cost and then um because it's dread banner it's not that bad and then uh the quality gets you up to 21 and the 20 so 41 impale yep with the aura effect disgusting and then my aura range you saw the banner size it's disgusting uh, and then assassin's mark has the alt quality so you can see normally it's four percent increased damage <laughs> 16 what the fuck is that yeah ashes and the um awaken enhance pretty good 
So that's that. And then we also, you got to make sure you have the extra um, leadership with the area of effect of aura skills. Because, dude, you're trolling if you don't have the extra 60 AoE and the extra 60 AoE and you don't have that banner size. Uh, yep. Very While I'm at that, let's continue the aura talk. So, aura radius, auras, aura stuff. Um, I have all of the auras on the tree except for Champion of the Cause and this tiny mana reservation. I use two extra small clusters for mana reservation. We have the increased effect of the smalls, which, so you get 8% mana reservation per point, and we have the extra int. Um, and then we had this one where we have the uh, destructive aspect, in increased effect, int, all attributes. Um, I actually have the wrong jewel, and this is supposed to be different. That's funny. I figured it out at least. Um, so with those, and then my other thing I was going to say is, um, I keep the quality on the discipline for, with the ashes, like the regular one, instead of doing an alt quality. And then also I haven't done Val discipline because it was expensive. I could get a Val discipline now and I should, but yeah, quality on the thing for the AOE is kind of nice because technically you could, it, it was cool with the grave intentions. I took it out now. It's not, it's less cool. You don't need this, but for the other ones, pride size technically grace you could give your minions evasion the divergent determination to give the armor and then the evasion as extra armor is nice um the purity of fire is very important aoe for the um the adenate dead <laughs> corpses exploding and then uh dead like the strong boxes all um, beyond all of the things the spirit the ghosts purity of fire instead of one of the other purities i know you want that extra max res but i'm telling you purity of fire for your minion survivability is disgusting uh highly recommend that so i've been running purity of fire as my one to go with the melding of the flesh um and for people who don't know how this works melding of the flesh uh, they've been hearing this a lot, maybe, and they're like, I, I see how you get the max reses, but I don't. it doesn't work. So, Purity of Fire raises just your fire max res, right? So when you take this out, your fire max res, 84. With this jewel, do you see how my other ones went to 170, 179? It deletes my res, but it can make all of the resistance maxes the same as the highest. So it has the cost of the normal res, but gives you max res. And is more effective the more max res you have. So obviously I've been thinking about your more max res. I have an option for more max res. It's just giving up ashes. And I don't want to give up ashes. Um, there's technically also... I could do the jewel. So I have this amulet. If you don't know. So instead of an ashes. Which I've been using mostly. Uh, on some bossing I've been doing this. Because it's so tanky. So I have... Um, this is a strangle gasp. So I... Corrupted eight strangle gasps. Uh, I got two rare ones. I combined the two rare ones with a recombinator with a plus two aura effect ami. The plus the aura effect is from a sentinel mod, so it was using recombinators on amulets, and then you get this mod. And then I had a plus two, so skills and plus one physical skills, and then. I landed the plus one skills and the increased aura effect, and uh, we already had cold res and life on the strangle gasp, and we landed those two. So it's a four mod ami if you go life. Um, it's really good. It's still a three mod ami. It's disgusting. And then I had anointed it too, like so the strangle gasp can be corrupted. I mean, uh, can be anointed before it's corrupted, and the base keeps it. And if you hit the strangle gasp base, so you see how it looks like a strangle gasp. Well, I changed it. It's actually an onyx amulet, and it's sad. It should look like a strangle gasp. Um, and then the uh, the last thing is you have to get the corrupted base to get the anoints. So you can't modify it after. You can't get un like rid of the corruption without getting rid of the anoints. So then, uh, with this, we have prismatic skin, plus two, all max, uh, the one max from Soul of Steel, the increased armor, charisma, and champion of the cause. So I can show you 206 mana. 151 still playable 89 reses 49k armor i gained 9k armor on 40 so like it's ultra tanky but like technically one of the big ones that was getting me down is 65k on the zombies and it goes down to 61k and uh, like my survivability for the minion survivability is is not great 
Um, then there's all the other quality of life also that was just showing the zombies. It's also move speed, the a the carry on golems, the cooldown recovery. There's the AOE of the auras. Like there's so many things just for some max res and armor, which I can honestly run. Um, an, since I don't run an impossible escape in my build right now, I could impossible escape down here and get the max res and get it back and be the tanky guy without um without running this amulet. Potentially. Uh, the amulet's really cool and I really like it and I'm a I'm big, big fan. Very much in love with it. But I just wanted to tell you this aura explanation with the amulet change and getting the tankiness to and the melding, I guess, at the same time of how we raise it with the purity of fire. And I, I could go more and I did have a way and I do it on some bosses depending and it's fun. But like, dude, Ashes is crazy, man. It's so crazy in our build because of how we do all of the skills. So many active skills. It's so good. Uh, I wanted to do a quick alt quality check over the build because Ash is so important. I want to make sure you understand the importance of the alt quality. So uh, this Desecrate is special. Uh, I like it because it makes an extra corpse. So sometimes when you Desecrate, you don't get all the corpses because of maybe a terrain, a wall, another corpse, uh, a monster, whatever happened that doesn't spawn all the corpses. Maybe you did it like you may. Yeah. Um, then I also like it when it has a guaranteed chance to get an extra corpse basically because it's 150. So you get six corpses and so when you only consume five with the flesh offering at max um then you get an extra corpse and you could use plague bringer and it's really cool that that functionality exists uh because like you're almost always guaranteed an extra corpse unless like i said it deletes one so then we have the divergent flesh offering on that is just massive attack speed oh uh, we had the aoe on the ag with the anomalous ag uh, we had the leech with uh, vitality. That's really cool. We had the uh, minion life and minion melee damage for the specter, which the minion melee damage isn't useless because it's actually the minion is a is a monkey and the monkey does punch and we have pob it and it does do some damage. It's kind of cool. Then you have the flame dash cooldown recovery rate, not useless. The duration of your Valmolten shell, very cool. Uh, we got the impale chance. We already showed how important that is. The increased damage taken from the assassin's mark. It's so many different weird sources of damage. And then the aura quality for the AOE is insane on the pride uh, for the dread banner damage for the impale. Uh, it's it's really crazy and then the survivability potential of purity of fire grace determination without having to spec into the extra extra aoe like where you could do the 30 aoe and the 30 um spell aoe over here for the 60 extra or you could do the element elementalist non-convergence setup where you get the 60 aoe with that with that um forbidden jewel i don't recommend that either heartbreaker or whatever heart stopper um yeah, this way we just get the 60 extra AoE on on the important ones without even needing to do that. The Ashes is so insane, dude. It's so incredible. Oh, and it's minion damage on the Skelly. Yep. Uh, I'm also going to go through build swap variations for different situations, but I figure start with the basic thing first. and then So I want to do the tree now. Um, I run one quickening covenant and you have to make sure that you put this where it doesn't hit any notables that you're using. So for example, I've put it over here cause I'm not using any of these notables like this, 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 um, I'm not using any of them. So we're good. And then all it does is minion attack speed, cast speed and dispression. And then I got a void stun corruption. But the main thing here is, um, the spell suppression 24, uh, my animate guardian, had 31 through his chest plate, 22 through the boot, 22 through the helmet. So he has 75, and he uh, I wanted to give him 24. So he's 99 spell suppression. It's really fun, and um, he's really tanky. <laughs> and so this is that spell suppression on minions. It's kind of like having the, it used to be spell dodge, but it's basically like. Yeah, 24% chance of half damage, so 12% chance block, block, spell dodge. It's the same thing, kind of, um, but more more consistent, technically, because it's a higher chance. So that's really cool. And then, like, the odds of R bad RNG happening less. Okay, so then, I, yeah, just don't put anything in the radius. That's the first one. And then I have the one anima stone, and I don't use the other primordial jewels because I don't find it worth it after I did the five link of zombies, which um, the five link of zombies kind of comes... 
whoops, kind of comes when you do aggressive on your wand, which uh, you could just get a plus one aggressive or like minion damage aggressive or minion attack speed aggressive or minion crit multi aggressive or whichever like one you feel like you could do the temple mod double damage and the aggressive combined through recombinators. You could do so many different variations. You could even go for some double mods with un uh, with no fractures uh, just with recombinators and it, and it could work like how i was setting up those wands to be able to fracture them you could technically do that kind of stuff for uh for your actual wand yeah so then um with the five link i have less priority on the carry on golem so then i was like three whole jewel sockets just for the the little bit of golem damage the golem regen which i don't want because i want the zombie survivability and then it's the cooldown recovery which i could get back some of it and i only wanted two anyways i only wanted two harmonies of the cooldown so 50 of the cooldown is already one and a bit of the harmonies back so we could just say good enough and saving all those golem jewels is insane and then the, it's better to keep the zombies alive because i could run things like this where we overcap the minion elemental res we have two of them uh, you can run two of these. They're Cobalt Jewels. You can run... Uh, you could get a Fractured mod, so Minion Elemental Res or Minion uh, Accuracy. And then you can roll this with Bound Fossils. Um, looking for Minion Damage, Minion Accuracy, Minion Elemental Res, the three mods. And Augment Life, the, the last prefix, to get this Minion Life. There's only three life prefixes so it's like a one in three it's like totem life max life and minion life so even if you hit the max life it's increased max life that's just good increased max life minion damage minion le res minion accuracy it's sick so even like you have a two of three chance yeah it's pretty good um and then you make this gun tier jewel and then the minion le res is more than a ghastly jewel the minion accuracy means you don't need precision you're you're like gone tier accuracy with just one of these uh two of them's pretty pretty insane the minion damage is as much as the minion damage points on the tree and uh the minion life is as much as the pathing on the tree as well uh it, it's a lot in in jewels you could also run forbidden jewels instead and just take the tree elemental res and you're good too um but I, I really like these. I was also messing around with uh, Forbidden Jewels. Where you take those out, you have to take this extra point of Elemental Res. Because I have 8, 15, and then the 20. So it's 43. To go to 83 with the 8% max LE Res from this Mastery. Because um, they start at 40 and then 43. Um, if you don't use these jewels for the extra Elemental Res. Uh, so then instead of those... If you didn't care about the accuracy, you could have run these. We could run Profane Bloom and have some explosions, and it's pretty fun. Um, and you get the... Your hexes can affect hexproof enemies. Cursed enemies, you or your minions kill have 40% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of their life as chaos. And you'll just have to curse the enemy, so your enemy guardian who's cursing already does it. But yeah, we ran a Punishment Blasphemy, um, and, and that that's pretty cool. But I don't want to complicate you with that. Mostly just run these, and... Uh, and you could also swap out one for an inspired learning and path the the nearby nodes for an inspired learning if you wanted uh for if you're doing a lot of rares but i set this up for bossing and i've been liking it all over the place not just in bossing uh, and then i run a fortress covenant so this can get the attack block and the spell block i prioritize the 12 spell block over the 12 attack block and i got 45 minion damage and then stun avoid from doing harvest implicits um yep really good jewel because um extra mitigation block it's not consistent but neither is the spell suppression but at least it's another layer of extra where it's better than like 10 percent life because this is more and this is increased so having sources of block that are consistent are really good like the sources of spell suppression that are consistent always up are really good um that's funny that he asked about the plus two aggressive wand. As I mentioned, a bunch of different combinations of going for wands. <laughs> uh, it, it would probably be making a plus two and then combining the plus two with the, with the aggressive and having a matching suffix and having a matching prefix. Yeah. Um, yep. And then probably you could even make the aggressive a plus one aggressive first so that the odds of the plus two are easier yeah so um i'm gonna message him that plus one aggressive and plus two 
have some matching mods like another um like one suffix yeah okay and that because the suffixes and prefixes are rolled separately so the prefixes would be the plus one plus one plus one uh you hit plus two hopefully and then you'd have the the suffixes aggressive and maybe like fire res fire res and you hope the aggressive stays okay so then um I did these small clusters, and I talked about how this one's just wrong. Uh, I don't even know how it's in the build. I left the wrong one in the build. That's so crazy. Uh, my ES is 5882. Uh, when I was changing my mana reservation, I left the wrong one in. So let's fix this up. This is my real one. So I like these smalls. The mana reservation, 84. Um, it's like 3x, 3.5x for the 3 passive. And then you roll the 35% increase effect, which is really easy. But getting the rest of this stuff is not easy. You don't need the ES. It's just survivability. And you don't. And the int is like a little bit of ES and mana. Uh, and then all attributes is nice, obviously, because I actually needed the attributes. And then... Um, that's way better. Look at that. I gained so much ES from that. Oh my god. That's insane. Yep. So then... <laughs> Maybe. Depends. You could all... Uh, it, it just trade. You could find stuff. So then... Uh, let's continue. So we had those two smalls. Uh... Mostly the increased effect, this one, the destructive aspect is technically better than just another small, um, until you run more auras, and then mana reservation, efficiency of skills is better than a specific, but I don't run enough auras, and the destructive aspect is such a big amount of mana reservation for pride. You can also do technically the determination or the other ones, but I did this one, uh, this because it has area of effect of the aura skills, which I really like, as I've been telling you so much about. Uh, I love the area of the aura skills. I appreciate it. So then uh, we have these mediums and I run five of them specifically. Very important for my build. Uh, the reason for this is it's five dread marches, four renewals and one feasting. So the one feasting is because I have um, this corrupted blood and I bought it and I paid a lot and I don't want to change it. Um, and then, the, yeah, the leech is pretty good. It, it's pretty good. You could run more feasting fiends if you wanted. It's not that bad. Uh, I like the re regen for the consistency because um, when there's no monster to leech off of, uh, you're dead. And regen is sick because you, you can't over leech on the minions. Or at least I haven't figured it out yet. Maybe by saying that I'll figure it out. So then um, the five dread marches is 50 chaos res and 50 fizz damage reduction and 50 move speed and 50 life. So um, basically they start at 20 chaos. The tree, I gave them um, the 50 through the dread marches, so they're at 70. I took this for 5% chaos. <laughs> um, it, technically, the LE res is also good because I told you overcapping them for um, curses and scorch are not that bad, right? Uh, especially when an enemy has increased effect of curse or uh, the scorch gets really big, dude. So then, uh, and you stack multi of that shit. Yeah, it's insane. Um, Highly rec oh you could, yeah uh, there's there's a lot of shit so I highly recommend uh five dread marches for the chaos and then the extra chaos you could take this out and just have them at seventy most of the time and uh, the extra five is for like a poison encounter or physis chaos or something uh so then uh the minion le res I have the extra thirty through the jewels but if you didn't have these jewels in your build for the minion le res which the main priority of these jewels is the minion le res and then the minion accuracy second um the minion damage is pretty good and the minion life is pretty good they're not bad but the minion le res is numero uno it's like when you're getting your base gear in your in your build and uh you're like i need reses my build literally just falls over if i don't have reses yeah that's your minions uh so if you don't have that you need these two for the minion elemental res and if you don't have five dread marches you need the full wheel of this to cap your minions chaos res and you're still missing two if you don't have dread marches so then um let's continue i have uh one point voices you could also run a large cluster and just take the five points and two jewel sockets but you lose one medium and you lose a jewel socket and uh the one point voices for its cost is actually good because you save a whole point over using a large if you even only took five points and it's then one saving one point and you get a whole jewel sockets 
it's fucked. It's fucked when you start to go, damn, I could take a whole four points for a jewel socket, or... Wow. I save a point and get a jewel socket, so it's like I got five points for using a one-point voices over a large, and the large was five points, so what? The large is ten points, but I... But I get two notables? I don't know about that, dude. You see what I'm saying? If you can use good jewels and you have the one point, it's good. It's good. But if you, yeah, if you can't make use of the extra jewel, then it's not that good. So then we start to see how these really powerful smalls is really important and the really powerful cobalt jewels. Because if this was only minion elemental res and minion accuracy, it won't be that good. So it's probably not worth it to run these if you only had one or two of the mods. And it's better just to take the tree and use the extra jewel sockets for uh, forbidden jewels because they're the ascendancies are so powerful, for example. Um, without, yeah, like you, you have so much contention for the jewel sockets. We have the impossible escapes. You have the small, like we even have, if you wanted, uh, we, I showed the forbidden jewels, Elemancer. You also have for, uh, you could just run primordial harmonies and get an extra golem. There's so many things that you want to fit. <laughs> it's insane. So if you don't have these perfects, then just take the tree of the minion Ellie res. Uh, that's the voices explained why i did voices it's actually good after figuring it out and um a large is fine and still very strong and very competitive because of if you can't make use of the extra jewel um but when you're going crazy yes it's it's really nice it's extra quality of life in your build to have extra jewels and more freedom and you don't really need the uh vicious bite renewal um and you skip the rotting claws, and we're at like 98% impale without running an extra rotting claws. Uh, we only run one. And then this one is a renewal, rotting claws, vicious bite, and we just take the whole thing because it's actually sick. And renewal is good sur survivability for the minions with the regen. The damage is nice when they're at full life, but it doesn't always happen. It's mostly the regen is just actually, you you do the math, this is just good um, uh, for, for one point. And then vicious bite, uh, very sick. Look at that crit multi, and with our build, with all the crit and all the setup, and the crit multi, and the crit chance, and the assassin's mark, and the brittle, where crit build, vicious bite is still good. I remember when this used to be 50 crit multi for zombies, yep. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly explain each thing and why it's important. Extra zombie, extra skelly, big damage, worth it. The pathing path isn't that bad either, 10% life isn't that bad. This is pretty good ES, mana, and int, it's really good. Then the minion Ellie res, I told you, uh, overcap or take both of these if you don't have the two cobalt jewels. The minion chaos res if you don't have all the dread marches and you'd want this, it's really good. And then we run one mastery for the defense, which is the minion max uh, Ellie res. The leech you can get through anomalous vitality or the uh, feasting fiends. And then uh, the, the other mods, you could technically get other sources, but we don't even want it, so it's fine. And then uh, I, I just path to Golem Commander instead of using an Impossible Escape. I don't take the Ravenous Horde because we were bossing, and it's just the move speed. And it is nice, but we have a lot of sources of move speed with the Offering and the, all the dread, dread Marches. I'm running all the base move speed, consistent, um, so I don't need it as much. Uh, and then uh, the, I also showed that the zombie actually has 50 move speed because of the ashes. It's sick. I run the reduced mana cost of skills with this and this one to reduce the cost of the skelly and um, the cost of the offering and the cost of the assassin's mark. Uh, it really helps a lot. And then uh, the offensive masteries. Uh, we run overwhelm fizz damage reduction, crit chance, and the offering. So... I found that uh, the most important is the Overwhelm Fizz Damage Reduction because when something is tanky, this is the most powerful thing you could do. The other thing is when a thing is tanky, so 60% physical damage reduction, you could tech in Divergent Poacher's Mark instead of Assassin's Mark. So you'll see that it has um, minus 21% to Fizz Damage Reduction and the 20%. So it's 41% and then you mark them and they're dead. Uh, it's really insane when you get to a tanky mob and you just you with your tree it mine six uh the 20 and the extra 40 you literally just delete a tanky mob it's insane um so i highly recommend this it's really powerful and then it actually makes your impales better it makes your crit everything's better with more deletion of the physical damage because physical damage reduction is just like a less 
multiply you just lose damage like so much damage so this was number one for against tanks uh crit chances insane in our build because of all the crit multi i've built with the kingmaker that you could have i, I have the crit multi on the wands and then we have the crit multi through the assassin's mark and we have the crit multi on the vicious bite and uh i took out the kingmaker for now i have two explode weapons on the anime guardian but yeah normally uh, and then we have the uh, increased effective offering. This you could take out, especially if you're AFK, you're not using the offering. So, yeah, but it, it is nice because the move speed and the and the attack speed, when you and it's a good damage node. And if you're using it, it's worth it. And then uh, here we have mana reservation or area or aura of effect and then aura on you. And I highly recommend the aura area of effect. And then um, the mana reservation is just good. I said don't take any notables in the circle or put this. You could put this in a cluster um, instead, and then it actually doesn't have the downside. Uh, that's what I did with the Fortress Covenant. So if you if you put these, it, it says here the jewel radius will not function, but the actual jewel still works. So it still it just gives stun avoid, minion attack speed, cast speed, and spell suppression without reducing the move speed of minions on the notables because it can't work in this so it's pr it's probably just better to do that to not confuse people and then it, when they see this functionality they'll be like oh that's sick i should always put them in the cluster if i can dude clusters are crazy yeah it's pretty good even though we had spots where we could put it anyways um a couple spots yep so that's the tree uh, i wanted to go over that and uh if you didn't know, chaos inoculation, so where you're immune to chaos, you don't have to build any chaos res. And then uh, the other one is you have to take Zealot's Oath to take the life regen as energy shield regen. So like we have um, a thousand regen in the build without uh, like that's converting the life regen to ES regen. It's really cool. And uh, yeah, this this build's absolutely insane. <laughs> uh, the, the ascendancy, I took uh, mindless aggression unnatural strength commander of darkness and bone barrier bone barrier is great minion survivability it's also recovery for you when you have minions up that's why my recovery was less i didn't have all my minions up uh, when i showed my regen it's because i didn't have all my uh zombies because i i killed them by taking out the gem by accident uh, i have just remembered and now I will, I can resummon them. And also reducing the mana cost allows you to resummon the zombies without turning off your auras. It's actually pretty cool. Um, they cost so little. It's actually kind of cool. And then um, the only thing you need corpses, it's actually a two button ability. So then uh, this is pretty good minion survivability. The extra 10 fizz damage reduction is absolutely insane for you. And the recovery rate of life uh, when you have pretty good recovery and it works it converts to es because it's life and es and then uh the more minion life is really important you have to take this to get here and then uh unnatural strength plus two so both these are really insane and commander of darkness 80 radius on the le res so this only works for you basically it's not reliable for the minions which is why we overcap the res and cap the res through the tree and we do not use commander of darkness for the minion elemental res the damage is fine damage uh and then the the auras okay so this actually adds like a tag to your aura that makes your aura give attack speed so don't think of commander of darkness buffing up your thing think of an aura like your um determination if it's on your ally your minion it gives attack speed so the different ranges of your auras is actually commander of darkness all of these you could think of a commander of darkness aura seven of them and then each one has different ranges so there's seven auras of that of attack speed but really it's just the the one aura each aura gets um the attack speed mod and then they have different radiuses yeah it's really crazy so yep <laughs> so now i'd like to go through the gear and i feel like i should link to the videos of the gear when i was making it uh and the video specifically and then there are cheaper easier ways of like the budget version of these but the big ones I have are insane. So this is a triple fractured wall. We got the minion double damage temple mod. The plus two. The crit multi mod is from Delve. You see of the underground. Sit a quantal attack speed. This is a fractured minion attack speed mod from the temple. And then trigger from a veil. So this is three fractures. Let's just worry about that. The double damage from temple. So Alva. Alva can drop wands in the minion area. Um, I don't have... 
this one. So if you take the hatchery to tier three and it gives a minion, it can give minion items. You can also just do like other league mechanics. And when you do the weapons, you can dr sometimes drop wands that have these uh, Sitiquato mods and you'll get like minion double damage, minion attack speed. Um, and then you'll be, you'll uh, see staffs a lot of the time with these mods too. And, uh, but the, we want the wands and then you can move the wand mod with recombinators to uh, convoking and fracture it. But anyways, uh, yeah, we have these three, and then the other one is from Delve. You would go to a minion node. Uh, I don't, I don't have one available right now. But minion node, where you get minion mods, and then you could get a convoking wand with minion crit multi, or minions are aggressive. Or there's one more. There's a, there's actually two, I think. But the minions have area of effect. Yes, there's many mods. This one's another subterranean. It's a prefix though. Um, and you can make this triple. I have a, I'll link to the video. And it, this like a mirror tier. And then I have another one. And this one actually has already gotten mirrored by Gameling, I'm pretty sure. So he's got the double damage plus two aggressive crit multi. And then I got attack speed. I rolled this doing keep prefix or just recrafting the one and annulling the suffix. And, and uh, <laughs> uh, just hit crafting plus tier two attack speed. Disgusting. The only thing better than this is if I got the temple mod, 28% triple suffix fracture, uh, crit multi, 28% end aggressive. I don't fuck that shit. It's insane. It's a, it's too insane, dude. So this is really good. And uh, these are my wands. For the helmet, I went for a discipline, mana reservation, efficiency, enchant. You could also go determination. Uh, technically, pride's not as good because... Uh, I do the de destructive aspect because I want to do this because it has the area effect of the aura skills. And if you like, if you get too much specific reservation for just pride, it's not actually good. It has diminishing returns. So you actually would prefer getting the reservation on a different aura that doesn't have any reservation or as much reservation yet. So it's better to spread out. So um, I did discipline it, and it has a higher percent. The, the pride is only 30% increased or the discipline's 45 and um it's funny this could be discipline 80 percent uh so this is like a little bit more than half right uh or it could be pride 50 and then pride 30 so the pride 30 is a little bit more than half too it's about the same right uh, but then the discipline here with where I get the better small cluster because I was thinking about the notable and I wanted the area of of the aura skills anyway back to she so got this reservation enchant there's a couple options here um, I think you could even go purity your purity one but because I was swapping around the different purity I started with purity of lightning uh, that's not great so then on the implicits, uh, this is a uh, double influence the eater of worlds and searing exarch I did the reservation perfect and then minion move speed. You could also do minion life. I told you I had lots of sources of minion move speed. And uh, you get the perfect through the orbs of conflict. You would get um, the eater mod through grand, for example. Put an exceptional eldritch ember on it. And then uh, you have a pretty good chance of raising the reservation. And you would keep adding back uh, uh, exceptional eldritch embers to increase your chance of hitting the other one uh, every time you hit the reservation up because you want to. Um, it, it's it's weighted based on the other mod tier. So if you used a lesser, it would actually more likely hit the lesser than it would hit the grand with the orb of conflict. Upgrading one and downgrading the other or deleting it. Uh, then the mod is a double fractured uh, helmet, increased ES, and spell suppression on a Huber circlet. So I got spell suppression moved over to Huber circlet with recombinators. I can link to that recombinator video crafting, but this is easier than we thought after all because when you do one prefix, one suffix, you have an 85% chance when you do a duplicate. So moving. Um, two fractures together when they're a prefix suffix is actually easier than doing two prefix or two suffix. Um, I was actually a genius five head without even knowing it back, back then because I actually did all of my items this way. It just made sense. It was like, isn't this easier? Suffix, prefix, suffix, prefix, suffix, prefix, suffix, prefix. And so when you see a triple fracture, this is not really a triple fracture. It's a double suffix. That's the hard part. We're getting one prefix, one suffix is actually okay because of how prefixes are rolled separately from suffixes. And just getting one mod when you have a duplicate with three mods, for example. So you, let's say, um, very quick, a plus one and then fire res, fire res, okay? 
um, the, the chance of hitting your mod with a duplicate with those three mods is 85% or something, not counting any of the like bad RNG that can happen to ruin the item of downgrading, upgrading, um, adding a mod and all that. Just the base stats. It's like, wow, that's actually pretty good. So yeah, then the, you think 85 on both the uh, the prefix and the suffix. So that's why getting both together is actually still harder than obviously just one, but um, it's not as hard as people thought. Then uh, I also used, as you see, these are tier two mods and these actually dropped this way um, from like league mechanics, like expedition, ritual, etc. People picked this up and then they were selling these for like two X, um, one X before. And then I was just recombining them with a pretty high success rate. And apparently then the double fractured mod items were to people just absolutely bonkers, insane, disgusting. But they're not as insane as people think. The Enlightened Four one's insane. The Global Defenses is insane. The putting it onto a Val Regalia is insane. The, this one, mm, eh, not that insane, not that hard. Uh, getting spell suppression onto a Sork Boot is cool, um, but T2. And that, so it, it wasn't a real fractured mod. I didn't have to use harvest. I didn't spend 50 X. It was two or one per try. And then, cause people could just like, yeah, drop the fractured boot. It's, it's really insane. And then the fractured ES, people don't care about defenses as much in, um, soft core. So that could also be why. And then the enlightened four was the Sentinel glove mod. This was like five X or something, but then uh fractured yeah this was actually expensive and you risk it and uh but it has a pretty high success rate and then i used a cheap spell suppression and cheap uh so then with the helmet uh i have the crafting of all this stuff but this one was uh used in essence on the suffixes hit int and then you can reforge the prefixes using eldritch currency by putting searing exarch as the um as the dominant and then you would use Eldritch Chaos Orbs and Orbs of Annulment and uh, X. And uh, it's pretty pretty rare, but when you hit a plus one to level of socketed or plus two, you could keep uh, suffix, like protect the suffix with suffixes cannot be changed because Harvest will respect it. And then you can do a reforge more likely in Harvest to uh, roll that plus one plus two to hopefully a plus three without having to re-hit it so you can actually use a harvest combination to make it easier to get that and then it's just um so yeah you use an essence of loathing for the reservation and then you hit the end and i stopped at t2 and then you roll the helmet and uh, i crafted uh, an, an extra zombie as my extra thing yep um the the chest plate is insanity i had a grasping you get I have a video on it, how to get the global defenses, but you get the global defenses from a grasping mail breach ring recipe. You sell 60 breach rings to the vendor and it'll come back the same item level as the average of all the rings. So make sure it's 83 plus. So you get back an 83 base um, of a grasping mail. When you ID the grasping mail, uh, you can get increased global defenses as a mod. You cannot roll this. It only comes from when you like ID it. You just click the scrolling. Um, and then it can sometimes uh, be fractured. And then the next thing is you can fracture this in harvest and, you know, fracture prefix. And then boom, I moved it to, well, I made a Val Regalio with spell suppression. And I told you that I, I can actually get the T2 spell suppression for cheaper than people thought. So I moved the spell suppression to a Val Regalia and then I made that base. And then I combined the spell suppression Val Regalia with a global defenses with matching mods. So one matching prefix, one matching suffix. Um, it's easy when there's fractured mods. So you could just craft, like I've told people, just craft with an essence and then craft on the base with the crafting bench to get two guaranteed mods. It's really sick. Um, that's easy. And then you have 85% chance of both, not counting the other RNG. And then to craft it up, this is the dumb part. Uh, I used Faceted Fossil and, uh, a vendor, uh, and a recipe I have. I made, I'll made. i link to the video. And uh, you can hit the socketed int gems. And then to get the int, you could keep trying to craft with the fossil, but I would recommend using Eldritch Currency again. And you make um, Eater of Worlds dominant. So you use one of these ones. And then you could roll uh, trying to exalt or annul to save that extra mod to get int uh, while like while not annulling your plus one intelligence gems. So you could try a few more times per each fossil craft without having to waste so many facet fossils. 
Um, it's really cool. And then after doing that, you can roll your prefixes with Eldritch Currency for the T1ES, or you could reforge um, the prefixes with Harvest. Um, so you would do suffixes cannot be changed. This is more expensive in my opinion. Suffixes cannot be changed. And then you would reforge with uh, Defense in Harvest, and it would keep the suffixes. You could do that. And then you would hit the base with um, tailor Tailoring Orbs from Heist to get this heist enchant defense modifiers have eight percent effect and you would roll the uh implicits searing exarch for the aura effect 20 percent where you make it perfect with orbs of conflict and increase your chance by doing an exceptional aldrich icor before uh each attempt of raising yep make sure that the other one's exceptional or higher uh and then yeah we rolled for pride after so the pride costs like one x the aura effect is 2x just to hit aura effect and then a bunch of orbs of conflict to raise it up it's really really rare um and then the boot just the double uh thing but it's kind of cool so what i did is i had fractured es on a sork boot and then i moved fractured spell suppression to a sork boot from an evasion boot and then i combined those two so that i had the sork boot easy clap and then the double frack as well and then I crafted this with an essence because you can't hit strength on a boot, uh, an int boot. And I needed strength in the build somewhere, so I did it here. Uh, so you did the strength essence for 58 strength. And I get the 50 int. I didn't care. Um, that was fine. I took a couple T2s somewhere. Some places, I mean. And then uh, a lot of T2s. And then I uh, got the moose. Speak cannot be chilled through uh, veil. You do. I did a... Uh, Suffixes cannot be changed, failed chaos orb until I got this move speed with cannot be chilled, and then I crafted cannot be frozen, which is a rin unveil, so you get a boot, and it costs 1x, uh, you get a boot that has a veil, like this, and it has rin's veil, and then you get cannot be frozen, easy clap, and you craft it, um, there you go, and then it's searing exarch, uh, brittle ground 4 seconds, I recommend four, and then I did the exquisite of the cooler and recovery rate of travel skills so that when I swap into my phase run setup instead, um, the phase run is 3.15 with a 3.10 second cooldown. So it's a permanent phase run. It's really cool with uh, increased duration 2120 and then the 2023 uh, phase run for the extra move speed. It gets extra move speed through the ashes. So it's like you start zooming with this thing, and and it's all it's permanent phasing, and it's also the enemies not seeing you, so it's it's really cool. Uh, I need my stun avoidance 100%, but besides that, yeah. But not for bossing. You don't need that for bossing. It's actually a bad thing, because the bosses shoot your minions more than. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. They don't they don't see you as much. Okay, so then this glove, like I said, it's the Sentinel mod in Lighten 4, and then I fractured it, and I got the Spell Suppression Cheap Glove, and then I add, I got the Spell Suppression on a Sork Glove, and then I combined them, and I got it, and then I crafted the base with an Essence, and you can hit Dex, and the reason I didn't do Dex Essence is because the Dex is actually higher on the base than it is on the Essence, so I get two more Dex, and then I got more Int using the Essence by three than the base, because it can only roll 55 Int, uh, and then I got... The prefixes, I did uh, suffixes cannot be changed again. <laughs> and then I did a veil. And this one was plus two to level of socketed AoE gems. So then the, the, this is a six link because it's like an empower three uh, for the AoE gems. And the enlightened four and its discipline determination grace pride and then it's 50 auras and the discipline it's so disgusting uh and then the implicit spell suppression minion damage uh so the eater of worlds is the perfect one here so you could increase your chances again by making this one exceptional while you're doing this one with an orb of conflict it's going to be pretty expensive but that's how i got my spell suppression and then we have the rings so this is just the Hungry Loop, and I have a video on it, but I added the Awakened Gems into it. And the way you do it is you get a level 4 Awakened Gem, and you put it in, and you actually have to get the XP on it, level it up, do the little click in the ring. So you have to actually consume them one at a time, but you can buy a pre-leveled up ring. So let's say, I mean pre-leveled up uh, gem and ring, though the gem can be 
uh, level 19 with all of the XP and the guy skips the level, you know how my desecrate's ready to be leveled up? Do you see how the bar is fully and it's ready to be clicked? I could sell this to somebody and then they just put it in the hungry loop and click it. But it has to be obviously level 19 turning into 20. It has to be reaching max level to be consumed. And then boom. So I could, you could buy pre-leveled awakened gems that are just about to be leveled but not actually clicked. And then those are more valuable than a fully leveled up clicked final level. Yep. So for the hungry loop. Really cool. And then that's my five link. And then this ring was the uh, underground mod. So I recombinated minion damage with end. Got the suffixes. Uh, wanted an open suffix for the endurance charge, and then I reforged prefix with uh, defense uh, after I turned it into a crusader ring with uh, crusader's exalted orb. So I tried to just hit increase DS on it with a crusader's exalted orb, but I missed, but then I just recrafted the prefixes, and this one I actually uh, slammed an extra prefix, and I hit T1 life. Yeah, so then this one was an essence. This is my messed up one where I got normal int t2 i don't know what the hell happened i think it downgraded and then i still crap i don't know what happened but uh or i bought that one and it's actually better than my normal one and it's really insane and then uh one more thing is this ring you can actually still anoint it with thing if you use a tainted oil tainted oil allows you to enchant corrupted uh stuff like rings amulets or blighted maps so i was still able to anoint it and then uh Another tip is you should do your catalyst. So I notice I have defense catalyst on my gear to increase the amount of ES from this. Uh, you, you could increase the attributes from your mage blood and you can do that from your ashes. Uh, yep. Now the flask, I have a bottled faith. Uh, this is rolled to 10% uh, increased damage and then the crit chance against enemies on, on consecrated ground. And uh, it's pretty good. And then we have... Uh, increased armor, regen, Ellie res, reduced mana cost, and then these are Ellie floss and a quicksilver, increased effect. It's really good. I like this shit. Uh, the only other thing, and you could do some evasion. Uh, there's curses. This is good though. I really like the setup. Oh, and there's bleed technically. I could get immune to bleed, but this is pretty good. Okay, let's talk about swap time. So I'll talk about the main ones first, the main ones that happen the most. So, uh, I talked about Divergent Poacher's Mark, but I'll say it again. So, when would you swap this in? If the monster boss thing has 60% physical damage reduction or more, you can use your Poacher's Mark and it's already good. And it's like, holy shit, really? That's insane. Yeah, just take out Assassin's Mark. But then, Assassin's Mark is always good, actually. It's really insane. It, it's just always pretty good but this gets really good against really tanky physical damage reduction mobs which is kind of like this is like the impale support overwhelmed the 30 percent for the impales i miss it dude holy shit uh it was really important for the impales to do more damage but whatever we still could do more sources of doing that and it still exists if the thing is avoiding impale of 100% because you did Height of the Hubris, Invitation, Avoid Impale, 50% that turned into 100% is better to take out Dread Banner and this Rotten Claws. Save the two points and just put it into something else in your tree temporarily like the 15 minion damage. Uh, and save the Dread Banner uh, and run War Banner. And this is just better because you don't you can't Impale. That's my tip there. Uh, you can run Phase Run instead of the Molten Shell while you're mapping because you don't need the Molten Shell. So then instead you can zoom and you have permanent phasing and it's really fun. And then the permanent phasing is because, like I said, it's phase run linked to a 2120 and um, it has the cooldown recovery rate of the from the boot. And it needs to be the T1 or no, this exquisite one. It's not perfect. It's, it's pretty high up there though. It's really cool what it does, what it enables. Yep sick and then we could also there's this ring so you could swap this ring if you didn't want the skellies so if you were like to afk then technically you could put the flame dash and then you have the room for the f for the phase run and that and uh you become a lot more of a lazy because you don't have the skellies anymore but you're able to run both and you're zooming and uh you're not casting the skellies for example and then you have the extra es from this ring and the extra minion damage and the extra endurance charge and it's really sick but that damage from the from the hungry loop skellies is is pretty insane and then the fact you can still run the flame dash you still run everything um then i could also show you 
one more thing, which was uh, if you dropped the increased duration in Vile Molten Shell, you can run uh, Awaken Blasphemy Punishment with my mana, and uh, I'm able to run this curse, and then I have a curse AoE, and I could take some more mana nodes uh, or reservation, and then I have enough to cast stuff, but technically AFK, let's see your AFK, and um, you have AoE punishment, and then I pointed out how if you take just this one Minionelli res node, uh, I don't need these jewels, so I could take these jewels out, and I can run Profane Bloom, you can run Forbidden Jewels, Forbidden Flame Flesh, Profane Bloom, and Explosions, and I was doing this yesterday, and it's really cool. Um, you can also take out Grace for Haste, so like you could just swap and run Haste actually in your build, and then you're running around with Haste, and all your minions have Haste, and it's pretty cool. You can feel it. Uh, Grace is really nice though. You only take out Grace when you don't need it, um, which is when there's no attacks, but there's, all, there's attacks in a lot of things, and it's hard to know as a new player. Um, and then I, tes I tested around with a Skitterbots version of the curse, but it's unnecessary. But yeah, when you curse the enemies, you or your minions kill have a 40% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of their maximum life as chaos damage. And with brutality, your carry-on and zombies don't do damage off the explosion, so it's only your AG and your Spectre. And then the AG has the big AoE, so it's huge explosions, and it's insane, and it's really fun. Um, it was very satisfying. And uh, it can work off of the Awakened Blasphemy Punishment. Because when you're AFK, you're not casting Assassin's Mark. So this is like a, a pretty cool way to to automate your curse while AFK. And we also could get explosions for the for the Uber Blight. And uh, the build the build is come, becoming really insane. Yeah. Really insane. What a goddamn season, dude. And yeah, you can take out Assassin's Mark while you run that. Um, and if you're AFK, you don't have the Hungry Loops, you could run the normal ring, you have extra gems, uh, it's really insane. I'm gonna, oh no, I'm gonna regret this, but basically, I, uh, I caved in after, uh, you running Purity of Fire and saying, dude, I don't want my shit to die to detonate dead, I'm gonna let them die to detonate dead and prove it, but no, uh, really, that, that's gonna be the diff, and then... Uh, I'm going to run Purity of Lightning, and then the reason for this is, I didn't realize this, but uh, when you buy this, and you and you put it in your build, and then you try to allocate the fire, you go, wow, it's also this too. It's not just, there's three layers of why this is dumb. So, the imbalance guard to get the max res, you get the two, the one, you'd get three if you had Purity of Fire, but because you go Purity of Lightning, four. Okay, so it's a, the difference of one max res, and then it's the one max lightning here, so that you have to, because you have to go brittle, you can't get the one max fire, uh, so one max lightning, so it's difference of two max lightning, then we're at 89, and I literally just need 6% aura effect and I'd have it. Whereas, um, I'd have 90, where if I did purity of fire, no max lightning, no max fire, uh, no max fire, you miss two, you'd, I'd be at 87. It's like, that's a huge difference, uh, just to keep my minions alive, to detonate dead, that it doesn't happen in the bosses, and I'm in the uber bosses now, and, uh, it shouldn't matter, actually, so it's only, like, Maven when she has the extra random stuff, it's RNG, uh, ran like, where this is consistently stronger most of the time, uh, and then my my anime guardian has the 99 spell suppression, so we'll see if he's good to dead and he dead. <laughs> uh, the difference without Purity of Fire and with it is pretty massive, though. And uh, technically, the minions didn't always have the Purity of Fire, but it was a pretty big radius, yeah. Now let's finish this in the POB. So, final thing I'll just show is uh, the whole build, whole tree. Uh, that's what we're looking at. And in the thing, it's 10 million combo attack dps carry on 4.8 on the zombie we go down here 159 full we got the the skellies uh there's 11 uh then you have the zombies and the carry on and then the massive impale dps and then uh they're the res capped without the commander uh and then it's purity of lightning now so like the difference purity of lightning they're god but the fire they're weak again man i missed if <laughs> it's almost like 50% more because it's 0.1 instead of 0.17, it's pretty crazy. Uh, I really like that extra fizz damage reduction. I mean, uh, the extra fire mitigation, but whatever for the detonate dead. Uh, I'm interested to 
have the extra five max light, uh, max res though through the imbalance guard. It's it seems really strong. And then the main use of impossible escape is to get to a point of the tree that you normally can't do. So it it really is these big ones like uh, chaos inoculation, the charisma, the the imbalance guard, these big ones. That's the main use of impossible escape. So it's it's good to be able to fit it in and show off eighty nine reses without even switching off of the ashes. What a disgusting build. Uh, either way, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I hope this has helped you guys. Um, the only thing I didn't go over was the Animate Guardian. Um, it's my Immortal Animate Guardian. So uh, the the one thing, uh, it has... One sec. All right, and I've done one really cool thing, which is in here, you can go into items. I have my Immortal Animate Guardian set up. So it's the... Kingmaker with the extra AoE and the quality and the harvest enchant. Uh, helmet. Nearby enemies take 12% increased fizz damage from the elevated elder. A85. Uh, you have the increased area of effect socketed gems are supported by level 25. Uh, 20 area of effect. Sh Shaper mod. This gives 15 AoE. Uh, then the T1 spell suppression and then cold res. Uh, I did the triple prefix. Uh, oh, wait, it deleted it. Hold up. Let me add it last. You can apply an additional curse. It's going to be like blacked out anyways. It won't matter. Okay. Um. There you go. Uh, there's the chest plate. So there's the triple modded, uh, triple chest. I, I showed a video on making this chest plate. I'll link to all the, all of the crafting in the description below. But um, it's the elevated redeemer. Nearby enemies are blinded. You cannot be blinded. And then... Uh, it, a couple of my things got deleted actually uh, get, let me add them all back cannot be blinded and uh this was 35 for some reason it won't let me do the elevated mods so i'm just adding back adding back mods that should be here there we go so it's a double elevated chest plate uh, where it's elevated redeemer and crusader combined and then uh, it's the super expensive chest plate that's like a mirror it's a triple prefix with the additional curse from delve the nearby enemies are blinded redeemer the elevated explode crusader and then i rolled the suffixes for t2 spell suppression and then i also hit two reses so that was pretty cool um, and then the boot is spell suppression, cold res, lightning res, move speed cannot be chilled, cannot be frozen. So the move speed cannot be chilled is the, the veil again, and cannot be frozen is the craft. And then I got brittle um, moving four seconds, brittle ground while he moves, and then life regenerate and regen if he's been hit recently from uh, the lab enchant. Then when you go into here, you can actually see, look at the animate guardian, and you can see he's super over res cap, and it's amazing, and he has extra chaos. And he's a big beefy dude, 75 uh, impale on him, 99 suppression. You can see all of these stats, you can see his uh, EHP, it's pretty good. Uh, he's do he's doing pretty well for himself. Uh, and the spells, if this was 100% dude, oh. But uh, yeah, I actually have it in POB. I have the Spectres in POB, Host Chieftain, Carnage Chieftain. Uh, I've, I've tried to include everything. And uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this uh, video. I hope you like these kind of guides. I uh, hope you like this build. I hope this could help you uh, further develop your own progress in this season. Uh, if this helped you guys, hey, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let's get 100 likes in two days on this video. Thank you guys for all the support. I can't do this without you guys, so thank you guys so much. And if you guys did enjoy and you hit the like button, hey, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!